Uh, I am Steve Ferradino. I'm the online manager. Uh, we started the online meeting about 10 years ago. We're, we're approaching our 10 year anniversary. Um, and we were really uh, honored to be able to uh, expand our online meetings and to continue to offer these presentations. I know we've done meetings on sabotage. We've done some continuing education on the step one that Lisa has done and another one coming up here in April. So really excited to offer today's presentation on specifically the big five. Again, recognizing some of the faces and many of you use the big five are aware of the big five, which is, which is great. Uh, and today we're gonna talk a little bit more about how to integrate the big five, how to use it in your meetings, and also to understand what the purpose of, of the big five. So um, we will uh, go ahead and get started uh, moving forward. So we know some of you have heard this speech, you know about Recovery International, and that it gives tools, our, our method provides tools to lead peaceful and productive lives. So that's one of our, uh, you know, mantra is one of our uh, commitments when we, as an organization, what we're presenting and what we're giving. And we do that by training to identify and manage negative thoughts, feelings, beliefs, behaviors that can lead to emotional distress and obviously physical symptoms. And so the big five, after we give it, helps to reinforce that very commitment. Right, so to be able to train our muscles, our, our thoughts, our feelings, sensations, impulses to work ourselves down. So we've seen this, many of you have seen the big five. It's also known as the recap. And so for years, many, many, many years, we bring out the tempers at the end of the meeting. So we would go through two or three examples and at the end we would say, okay, let's review the angry and fearful temper to address um, any sabotage to, to be able to recap the examples. And so my hope for this training is that we're gonna demonstrate how to utilize the big five and the benefits of that recap. And to address that we do it at the end of each example rather than at the end of the meeting. So you can see here, this are, is the big five, angry temper, fearful temper, muscle control, muscle movement, sabotage. And then we end with the opportunities for self-endorsement. And we're going to break this down throughout the next hour so you can see each individual uh, section of the big five, as well as spots, tools, and even where to implement it in a, an example form. So you're going to see it in real time. So now that we've kind of heard the, uh, all the doorbells have kind of come to, to which is great. So um, most of our attendees are here. I'd like to take a quick poll of which concept of the big five do you have the most difficulty identifying? Most people have. Yeah. yeah. The biggest problem with sabotage and then muscle yep. movement after that. So sabotage is often one of the, the areas that people talk a lot about having the most difficulty. So we're going to go through a quick example that uh, I put together. And so my request is that you remember this example as we go through each section of the big five. So the example is step one, which we know is the event. I ran to pick up my kids from school and a package was delivered to the house in the rain. When I got home, the box was wet and that's when I worked myself up. So we know that's the event. Step two, I was clenching my jaw, right? So the step two is physical symptoms, sensations, thoughts, and impulses. So clenching jaw, angry that it was delivered in, the, in that short time frame while I was gone. My thoughts, why did this have to be delivered during the 30 minutes I was gone? Couldn't they have tried to protect it? I was afraid that the electronics inside would be ruined. And I had the impulse to call the delivery service and yell at them. Step three, you know, is our tempers, right? Angry, fearful temper, comparison temper, spotting, and then areas for endorsement. So I had angry temper directed at the delivery driver for not trying to tuck the box close to the door to stay dry. I had fearful temper at myself for not leaving a bin outside for them to put the box into. 
spotted my symptoms. This is distressing, but not dangerous. It's a trivial situation. And if the device was ruined, it could be returned. So there's a secure thought. Can't control the outer environment. And I endorse for controlling my reactions to the situation. So in step four, which we know is what happened before and after recovery. So before recovery, I would have made a big deal of this and called the delivery service and reported the situation. Now I can take secure thought that it will be fine and things are boxed appropriately these days for the weather. So we ran through that example. So again, as we go through the big five, you see the example, and we're going to be able to talk to those five steps based on this example, okay? So angry temper. In every example, we know we have angry temper and fearful temper. It's like night and day, you can't have one without the other. Sometimes the example giver might not be able to demonstrate or recognize the tempers, and that's what's great about not only opening up to the panel, when we open it up for spotting. Also, the wonderful thing about the big five is that we can provide feedback tempers without advice, of course, right? Um, so we don't give advice, but we're able to spot on those tempers because we're learning from the experience and knowledge of others. So we know that angry temper is, is at the outer environment. I'm gonna move us onto this, but remember always that this is the judgment of right and wrong in everyday events. It does not apply to legal, moral, or ethical issues. So at the other person, so it doesn't matter what word it is, it's anything, the environment, um, who are you angry, irritated, disgusted, any feelings associated with that outer environment. So feelings will hear related to angry temper. I was irritated. I felt resentment. I was impatient, hatred, disgust, rebellion. Anything outside of us, falls under angry temper. So some spots that we, that even the example giver might used or was even mentioned during step three and it was spotted on with the panel, it's okay when we go back to the big five, we can do some reinforcement of these spots because this is a muscle memory. So we're, we're having muscle memory with angry temper and where do we see that angry temper? So I wanted to, let me open up some of the cameras um, and call on a few people. So Nandy, in that example that, that we just, the, you know, that made up example, um, where do you think we would spot angry temper in that example? At the, um, the situation with the, with the driver, but you know, the person, they, if they can't control the situation, they can change. If they can't change the situation, they can change their attitude toward it. And they did. Right, right. So in, in that first step of angry temper, that, that's where we would see them. These are some spots for angry temper. Riona, do you see any other spots for angry temper here? Um, we can drop the judgment. Right. We can drop it for the sake of our mental health. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so we can see here and it may not be, and we know that any of our spots will work. It doesn't necessarily have to be any of these, you know, 10, 12 spots that are listed. It can be of those spots, but we're going to specifically in the big five, look at that angry temper, right? The judgment of right and wrong towards the outer environment. So then we go to fearful temper. Again, that judgment inward, I'm wrong negative judgment at us, at, at ourselves. So what feelings am I having about myself and my own behavior, right? And so when we look at some of those feelings, worry, I'm in it, hopelessness, damage to ourself, right? The, the fearful damage thought to ourself or our reputation, sense of shame. And so anytime we're judging ourselves, we know that falls under fearful temper. So when we're doing that recap, Right. So the, the person had left 30 minutes, the delivery driver, um, you know, leaves the package within those 30 minutes. And now we have, we, we're going to spot on fearful temper when we're in that second step of the big five. So let's see, and I'm going to open up the cameras to call on Lisa, where do you see the fearful temper or spot the fearful temper in this example? The person that gave the example, I spot fearful temper that they made a mistake courage to make a mistake and the nuance of worry that, you know, it might be ruined. 
you know, so maybe some imagination on fire. Right. Yeah. And so um, let me call on, I'm trying to call on some, some different names here. Um, so Tom, where do you see fearful temper in this situation, in this example? Well, he's thinking, well, I should have put a, I should have put a shelter out for it. I should have figured out it was going to rain. Mm -hmm. Right, right. To know it, right. To to, to predispose that, that I, like I would know it was going to rain. So, what would be a good spot there for fearful temper? Well, we know that we don't know. I don't see it, but that's a good one. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's a great one, right? Like, or just some that that we wanted to list here for specifically for fearful temper, and any of them work. I know Lisa. I'm going to take this from her, from her training. We can close our eyes and point, and any of these will work. Right? Fear is a belief and beliefs can be changed. Um, there's a great one that's not listed here. Judgment of ourselves or others robs us of our inner peace. Because the, in the example giver, we would spot fearful temper. I did something wrong and that judgment. Right. So, um, friend, do you have thoughts for fearful temper or, um, on this example? From your list? Yeah. Any of them, really. Um, we learn not to take ourselves too seriously. <laughs> a great one. Right. So now we're going to go into step three of the big five. And thank you guys for, for participating. So the third step is muscle control. Right. So when we're the muscle control is in the muscles not to do something that would be bad for our mental health. And so when we, we think about that, uh, um, and I'm not going to spot on this specific example because I want to open it up to you guys. Anything that we do, that impulse in step two, that we controlled, right? So to send the text, to send the email, to make the call, to to not let the person in when we're on the highway, um, you know, to to speak out in anger, to complain. That's all under muscle control. Yeah, go ahead, Lisa. I see your hand up. Let me unmute me. Yeah, uh, the example giver controlled that impulse to make that phone call. To talk it up is to work right. it up. Right, great, yes, thank you. And and so um, that, so do you see any of these um, thoughts here that you think would be good for muscle control? I would say then back to the uh, talking, every act of self-control leads to a greater sense of respect for not making the call. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. And when we control, this is what's so great. Again, we are reinforcing, we're recapping the example, we're reinforcing the successes of, of the example giver, right? Because we are we are constantly wanting to reinforce what we've done well, rather than indicting ourselves for what we've done, you know, air quote, wrong, right? And so when we control those impulses, we have to regret later. So the next one, is, which would be step four, is muscle movement. And sometimes muscle movement can be pretty pretty apparent, pretty uh, obvious, um, right? So it's commanding the muscles to do something that we are resistant to do, or maybe in the past what we would have not done, which would be good for our mental health. So we're, we're, this is, we really are enforcing, reinforcing the movement of the muscles, the positive behaviors. So, um, it's obvious when, when an example giver removes themselves from a temper provoking situation, they made a plan to, you know, to move their muscles. And sometimes during the example, they don't see the muscle movement. So when we open it up to the panel, when we do the big five, we are um, reinforcing and supporting that example giver by simply coming to the meeting. That's muscle movement. I think sometimes we forget that. They were an example and even just giving the example bringing it to the panel we could say is muscle movement they got on a meeting many of us you know got onto a zoom meeting um you you asked the leader to give an example and you gave one that is movement of the muscle so this is really important a couple of people said they had a hard time with muscle movement and this i really want to emphasize and, and comment on this um, a little bit more that when we decide, plan, and act, that is muscle movement. So when, when we're doing the big five and you're part of that panel that's doing the big five and commenting, 
you know, where do we see muscle movement? Oh, they can't, they just gave an example. And so we can really reinforce that, that positive progress. So, um, so I wanted to also, again, some spots for muscle movement. Let me bring up the camera so I can see all of you guys and call on somebody else. Um, Ellen, in this example that, that this made up that we gave, where do you see muscle movement? Um, hmm. I'm kind of stumped because she, she actually exercised muscle control um, in a positive way of not calling or texting the company. Um, right. I guess, uh, so I put it that way. So muscle movement, she took the package inside presumably and um, went about her business. She didn't um, reach out in anger, angry feelings, angry, sorry, in, right. in anger, yeah. anger. Yeah. And so which one of these spots do you think would be good for muscle movement? Uh, command your muscles to do what the brain fears to do. The great one. Yeah. Fedora, do you see any other spots for muscle movement? Choose peace over power. Yeah, it's a great one, right? A lot of these. Yeah, right. So remove ourselves from a tense provoking situation, taking the total view. I, they said, um, you know, packages these days are, are you know, um, are packaged a lot of times for weather. That's that thought, moving the muscles. So she commanded, or this example giver commanded the muscles with the muscle control and then move the muscles by spotting, by giving an example, coming to a meeting, writing out an example. So um, again, that all falls under muscle movement. Now, some people mentioned, um, people mentioned sabotage as a really hard or most difficult that they have with uh, five, right, of the five steps. So sabotage is when we, uh, ignore or fail to practice what we've been taught in, uh, to do in our eye. Uh, we do not, or excuse me, when we do not do what's best for our mental health. So what is sabotage? Asking why, interpreting, not endorsing, not using spots or tools, self-diagnosing, acting on the impulse, using judgment and wrong in the trivialities of everyday life, not controlling those muscles. Even in the example, when they're presenting, when somebody's presenting the example, using temperamental language like always, never, this is impossible. And remember, my request is that you always remember that sabotage is not an indictment. And Dr. Lowe had several chapters dedicated to sabotage as a means to support and recognize where we're responsible for our world. Okay, and so I know many of you have um, probably attended Rexy's uh, training and, on sabotage. Um, and so we don't want to uh, shy away from recognizing this part of the big five. And so sometimes we'll hear people say, oh, well, I don't see any sabotage. And we have to remember, we do not have an example if we did not sabotage our mental health. Simply letting that outer environment bridge into our inner environment with angry temper, comparison temper, uh, into our inner environment is a form of sabotage. And so we want to recognize where we have control over our thoughts and impulses. And so in sabotage, what, what happens, and I see a few hands popping up, so we, we will definitely be able, I'm going to continue with this and, and call on people, is we want to recognize, and the leaders are trained to help to recognize this sabotage. Because this is where step four is so important, is we recognize the, the successes and also where we can uh, where we can improve. Many of you have heard, if you've ever attended one of my meetings, you've heard me say, please bring an example where you've you've acted on those impulses, where you've lost your temper, because we want to be able to do this together. And the next time that situation happens, this is what I can do. Because if every time we came to a meeting and we gave examples where recovery just was great and it worked and 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 everything came. We're not learning from that. We learn from our successes as well as our mistakes. So um, let me open up the, the um, call on somebody. Um, 
that, uh, so Linda uh, Schwartz, where do you spot the sabotage in this example? Um, asking why, yeah, um, uh, he asked why um, they didn't leave it in the, why they, they didn't deliver it at another time, I think, or what protect the package. Right. Yeah. And and so that that judgment. Right. And and asking why. So what would be a good spot for let me change that. Sorry. Um, what would be a good spot for sabotage in this example? Are you still asking me? I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't uh, blame, complain or or explain. Yeah, it's a great one. Right. Um, um, let's go one more. Steve G, where, where do you, is there a good spot here for sabotage on this example? Yeah, along with that, to talk it up is to work it up. Yes, right. And, and we're, um, we, we want to recognize uh, as a panel where the tempers, the muscle control, the muscle movement, and it, again, the sabotage, because we're learning from this example giver's um, presentation. Example. So, how we end is we end with opportunities for endorsement. Okay. So, we don't wait for the outer environment or for others to endorse our efforts. We need to learn to praise ourselves rather than depending on the praise of others. And what is great is that when we, as the panel in the recap, are seeing where this person can endorse, that helps reinforce for us, as well as the example giver, what we have done well. And so um, let me, uh, it looks like Warren raised uh, his hand. Warren, where do you see where this example giver can endorse? And you may have to take yourself off the of mute there. Oh, um, here we go. Well, she can definitely endorse for uh, not uh, complaining, not uh, calling the company up in, in uh, she can endorse for uh, um, for just continuing her day. <laughs> so wait. Right. And and thank you, Warren, for that. And sometimes simply coming. So if I, if I was leading, which I am, I know I'm leading this this you know um, mock example. I would say uh, endorse for coming to the meeting, for giving the example, right? For controlling those impulses, and we'll go through. That, and that whole thing takes about five minutes. And after the endorsement is done, we'll close this example, thank the example giver for giving the example, and then we're gonna move on to the next example, right? So now that example is done and we would do this each time. And, and in an hour and a half, in a 90 minute meeting, we usually get to about two or three examples depending on how long the reading uh, and discussion and so again, many years ago, we would bring out the tempers all the way at the end of the meeting. And the benefit of the big five is that when the example's over, we move on to the next one. We don't need to remember after three examples, which example, you know, where was the angry temper? What was, you know, Lisa's example? And she did, you know, this, and this was the fearful temper, and this was the angry temper. It's over. We've completed that, and we can move on to the next example. We're not trying to, to remember where each example was and because and sometimes they would blur together. So again, we're going to run through this, but I wanted to stop here because I know that was a lot of information and see if there were any um, questions. Angela, I know you've been um, monitoring the, the chat. Um, questions that people have? Steve, I don't see anything in the chat. There was an endorsement, though. She can endorse for picking up her kids. He said, do we consider the initial flare of temper um, and active sabotage. Um, I, I would say no, that that because um, we're allowed the initial flare, as Dr. Lowe said, it's what we do with it afterward. Um, so we, we want to recognize, again, in that sabotage that people have, we are responsible. We're res so if, if we lost our temper, um, that is where we're sabotaging. Sometimes in step um, one, we'll see sabotage where we'll begin to talk it up. 
you know, that we want to give lots of information. I know in Lisa's presentation a few weeks ago, that was something that, that she had mentioned uh, in her presentation about step one. When we're talking it up, that is a form of sabotage. When we're using temperamental lingo, uh, when we ask why, that even in our examples, that's how we know we're, we're sabotaging our mental health. So um, I know that there wasn't many questions in the chat. Are there I, other I questions have, that people have? Yeah, and Steve, I do have another one that popped up. Uh, is not yeah. seeing averageness considered sabotage? Yes, yes, yes. That's a great question. And when we're doing the big five recap, when we're when we're recapping, again, this all happens quickly. We're we're spreading it out. I'm, I'm, I know sometimes I can be a little wordy. Um, that that we we are we want to make sure you guys understand that in that big five. The leaders are trained to move through. So we're not, even as the panel, we're not talking it up. Uh, we're, we're giving some more extra spots and tools, and we are learning experience and knowledge of others. So yes, anytime we ask that, that we know that that's sabotage. Martha, I saw your hand pop up. Go ahead. Thank you. I want, you did such a great job with recap of the sabotage at the beginning of this presentation. And I've gone twice to Rexy's sabotage meetings, but you itemize them very clearly. Can you take the time before we end to re-itemize those so I can write yes, them Yes, we're going to actually, yeah, absolutely. And we're going to redo this in one more example. We're going to do it again. Um, and we're going to break it down again so you guys can see how to apply um, the big five. So it's a great, yeah, we'll def you'll definitely be able to see that, that again for sure. So um, Warren, go ahead. Yeah, I uh, I found uh, uh, as far as sabotage, uh, I, I focus on the uh, deceptive thought. What was the deceptive thought that the person had? You cannot have temper without that deceptive thought. And uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to emphasize that because I find it really helpful. Yeah. And one of the things, Warren, it's a great point, right? Those thoughts and impulses that we have, that is a, a form of, of sabotage. And I, so so Judy's question, sorry, somebody just put it in the chat. Is the big five something Dr. Lowe would say? No, this was something that evolved over time. Just like um, the four steps were not directly uh, written by Dr. Lowe. Um, when, when the meeting were created and, and Phil Crane, uh, you know, when he went out into the community and started meeting, uh, they were able to write out the four steps to help uh, a consistent meeting, a consistent method. Um, so yeah, this isn't something specific that was written by Dr. Lowe. It is something that has evolved over time in order for us to, to have that uh, consistency when we're closing each example. So Angela, I saw your hand pop up and then we'll get to Marilyn. Just uh, something in the chat. So regarding muscle movement, is thinking a muscle movement? For instance, changing a thought. Ooh. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, I would answer that question. Yes. When anytime, um, even if you're doing motionless lying that Dr. Lowe said, go go to take five minutes and just do motionless lying. To me, again, he's not here to confirm or deny what I, this is my interpretation. And as a leader and the online manager and when I'm training my leaders is when we do the spot, decide, plan, and act. Because we know any decision will steady us. Right? So maybe that's going and taking a shower, changing our clothes, going to the mailbox. And in my uh, interpretation is going and laying down for that five minute motionless line, you are moving your muscles. I'm actively thinking about how do I work myself down? So when I'm spotting, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out my tool cards. Many of you have seen me do this. I've got my tool cards here. That is my, I am moving my muscles. Even though I'm sitting here, I'm getting those tool cards out to change my thoughts. So yes, I would, I would say, yes, that is an, a form of muscle movement. Um, go ahead, Marilyn. Oh. And I've yeah. got you off mute. Yep. 
Yeah, um, I just, I, I, you know, when thinking, I, I understand the difference between angry temper and fearful temper. The issue for me, and maybe it's sabotage, I feel fearful in both types of temper, and I feel angry, and I, to me, you know, angry temper is anger at the outer environment, and inner, and mm -hmm. the fearful temper is uh, more, um, you know, angry at myself. So, mm -hmm. And the words yes. sort of confuse, they don't confuse me, because I understand the difference, but I found it, find it sort of misnamed, if that's the proper word, mm -hmm. um, because like I said, I feel fear and anger in both types of temper towards the outer environment and myself. Right. And so when we're using, after you've given an example, and it's a great topic and a great discussion, so thank you for that, is it was a way to differentiate the two between angry and fearful temper. So in the big five, when we're spotting, when we're offering spots and tools, we can provide that feedback to the example giver as we're wrapping up this example. Um, where do we spot the angry temper? If they said they're angry at themselves, that would be fearful temper, right? They're frustrated with themselves, right? So we could offer a spotter tool in that regard, right? So, so that was just a way to, to make the difference. So the spots all help and they all work. Like as Lisa has said, and I continue to use that, we close our eyes and point. Sometimes I'll just open up my toolbox, my card box, and I'll just pull one out randomly because any spot will work at any time. Fran, I'll give you the, the next question. I see your hand up. Planning and deciding without acting. Is that mm -hmm. muscle movement? Yeah, again, I think that when we are using any spot, Fran, any spot that we use, we are moving our muscles. So we are specifically our brain. brain muscles? Yeah, I, I again, I, I think that we are retraining the muscle that is our brain that is you the, the same way we don't think about oh i'm going to walk to the kitchen our brain we just walk we just start walking it, and so we're, and my my hope is as we're coming to these meetings and we're we're retraining the impulses that that it just happens naturally um that i'm going to control my speech muscles and not you know speak out in anger when my daughter rolls her eyes at me i, I may not have spotted that but I have I have spotted and I've written out examples and I've given examples that it becomes natural to just control my impulses, my my speech muscles, um, naturally the same way it's just natural to walk, you know, to my car, right? So, um, Angela, I see your hand up, and I do want to 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 get to um, the next example so we can continue to practice. Go ahead. Uh, this is about endorsing. So I see when people give ideas for endorsements but they're not actual spots. Is this more of a person's opinion? Like, is that okay to do? You know, she endorsed for picking up her kids in the car. Like that's not a spot. So is that okay right. to do? I think is the gist of this. Yeah, I, I think so, right? Because when we're, again, we don't wait for the outer environment to endorse us. Why we added that was that we realized we are ending on sabotage and people were avoiding do talking about sabotage because it felt, and we know those are not facts, what the feedback we received was it felt like we were ending on a negative. And so what we wanted to do is since we're always trying to get us, all of us to endorse for what we've done well, Many of us know we do a great job at indicting ourselves for what we've done wrong. And so when we're endorsing ourselves and we're thinking, oh, Angela can do, you know, endorse for coming on to this meeting. You know, Marilyn can endorse for, you know, sending that email, right? It makes us think about, well, what can I endorse for? What should I be endorsing for? And so we're ending on that positive. So yeah, there isn't an actual spot of, um, you know, specifically for endorsement, we're just ending on that positive reinforcement of the skills and successes that the example giver presented. So I hope that answers that question. Um, Lisa, I'll give you the last one. I saw your hand pop up and then we're going to move on. I, I just want to be clear that when we endorse, we don't say uh, that this example giver, she can endorse for not, she can endorse for uh, using the method. We can say it with a spot as well 
Right. Right. We yeah. can, yeah. we can, she took, she continued on with the daily rounds. You know, we could right. put it in a spot yeah. there. Yeah. But I kind of, yeah. I like when they kind of personalize it. They, she went on with the daily rounds or she can endorse for not calling the manager. You know, that's that's where we kind of see the difference between how we were before step three and step four, which is a, a wonderful way that we want to all be. We don't compare ourselves to anybody else. This is going great. Right. I love this. Yeah. And so the next we're going to do this, that poll again. Um, so I would like to um, and Angela is going to go ahead and start that um, after going through the the um, five steps plus endorsement. Um, what concept do you still feel uncertain about being able to identify in the example? Wonderful. So, yeah, so we see again um, that it is um, still that that uh, sabotage is, you know, 46 percent of those that, that did participate. One of the things that I, I really want to reinforce, because um, a few people said that that muscle movement is, is sometimes to uh, to recognize, is if nothing else in a situation, in an example that was given, somebody coming to a meeting, asking the leader to give an example, giving presenting that and giving that example is muscle movement. The movement of the muscles overcomes the defeatist babble of the brain. It's one of my favorite spots because our, we have that impulse and that instinct to avoid the difficult conversations. And so the fact that you, you register for a meeting, you get on the meeting, if you're on an online meeting, or if you went to a face-to-face -face meeting and you got in your car and you drove to a meeting, you've moved your muscles. If you dialed in for the phone meeting, if you got on the Facebook page and wrote out an example, that's all muscle movement. So when we're giving that feedback in the big five for muscle, if you don't see anything else, recognizing that person for being able to, to give, um, you know, move their muscles, change their thoughts. So I know we have about 15 minutes left. So we're going to go through this example again, right? And so we know that in step one, what is the event, right? The everyday event when that person began to work themselves up. So in this example, the event is that's how to clean up their dishes. They walked out of the room and that's when I began to work myself up, right? So very simple. That's the, the trivial event um, that, that, uh, that the example giver gave, right? So in step two, feeling sensations, thoughts, and impulses. So the feelings of anger, fear, sadness, hatred, embarrassment, tightness in my chest, adrenaline rush, pounding of the heart, um, the angry and fearful, fearful thought, they're wrong, I have no authority in my own house, I should ground them for life, I'm worthless, I'm not enough, um, why can't they just listen to me, they do this every time. The disturbing impulses, ground them forever, take away all of their belongings, to speak in anger, follow them up the stairs and complain, right? So that's step two. So step three, report your spotting of angry and fearful temper and the RI tools you help to uh, help you, excuse me, you use to help yourself and your self-endorsement for the effort. So the angry temper at the child, at the event, the fearful temper, discouragement, embarrassment, worry, sense of shame, feelings of inadequacy. So what spots and tools were used? People do things that annoy us, not to annoy us. Children are our greatest saboteurs. If we can't change the event, we have to change our attitude towards it. And what was the endorsement? Endorsed a list, started to complain to my spouse and did not engage further discussion in, in further discussion with them. So before and after recovery. So before recovery, I would have followed my child up to their room and yelled at them for their disrespect of all of my hard work, hard work. And I used as many tools as I could think of, um, and I was able to endorse for my efforts. Okay, so that that example, again, I'm going to go back because um, I know that's a lot, right? So we just did that over five minutes, right? The example takes about five minutes. We then open it up to the panel, and then we would now move on to the big five. So that, that trivial event, 
right? There's the feelings, sensations, thoughts, and impulses. Again, the spots and tools, um, a little bit of endorsement, and seeing that difference between step three and step four. So I'm going to have the whole big five because on our webinar style, this is what it would look like, right? So somebody would come um, and we'd go through the whole thing, and then the next slide would be the big five recap. Um, let's get some people to, to be able to participate. So, um, Anna Maria, can you read um, Angry Temper for me? Uh, in this sequel? Or read it. Oh, just read. Yep, yeah, just read it. Read Angry Temper. Angry temper at the other person or the situation includes resentment, impatience, indignation, disgust, and hatred. Okay, so in this example, that this mock example that was given, where do you spot the angry temper? Towards her children and the frustration okay. towards them and what they weren't doing. Right. So what would be a good spot for angry temper here? Uh, um, temper is intellectual blindness at the other side of the story. Right. So we now, a few more people may spot on angry temper. So again, for time, we're going to move on. So great job, Anne Marie. So let's move to fearful temper. So Susan, will you read fearful temper for me? Sure. Um, my Anya. Negative judgment yes. of oneself includes discouragement, preoccupation, embarrassment, worry, hope, despair, sense of shame, feelings of inadequacy. So where do you spot the fearful temper in, in this example? Um, maybe she feels she's a bad mother in some way. The, okay. uh, and, and what would be a good spot there, right? So that feeling, right? What would be a good spot for, for that? Feelings are not facts. They lie and deceive us and tell us of dangers that are not there. It was distressing, but definitely not dangerous. That's right. We know, right, that feelings are not facts. It's simple. Right. And and now, again, we could spot a few more of the fearful temper, but we're going to move on again for time. Um, so where do we spot? Let me call on someone else. We're going to move on to muscle control. So, um, Eve, uh, can you read muscle control for me? Controlling the muscles not to do something that would be bad for our mental health, controlling our speech muscles. Well, yeah, for example, right? Yeah. Where yeah. do you spot the 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 muscle control here well when we control our speech muscles we have nothing to regret and she she didn't go for any symbolic victory with them because that would be an empty victory right the impulse to follow up the stairs the impulse to ground the child for the rest of her life right mm -hmm. the, those impulses right um yeah. and controlling that right and so we again we would open this up to a few when we comment a little bit more, we, we want to reinforce that muscle control. So great job. Um, so how, let's go to muscle movement. So, um, oh, uh, Christy, I saw your hand up. Did you want to spot? We haven't heard from you. Sure. Uh, muscle movement. Uh, oh, yeah. Why don't you go ahead well, and read muscle movement for example. me? Uh -huh. Okay. Commanding the muscle to do something that we are resistant to do, which would would be good for our mental health. And I would say giving the example and walking away from a provoking situation. Yes, yes, right. Removing herself or himself from a tense provoking situation. So now we're gonna go to sabotage. So um, Colette, would you read sabotage for me? Um, sabotage, when we ignore or fail to practice what we have been taught to do in our eye, we do not do what is best for our mental health. Um, using judgment of right and wrong and trivialities. Yeah, it's a great one, right? Yeah, the judgment of themselves as a parent and judgment of the, the outer environment, the person, right? The other one that I purposely wrote in here, so a um, little cheat sheet, is when it says, I endorsed a little, that's sabotage. Right? I, I, I started to complain to my spouse, right? Again, I did that on purpose, right? Because this, you'll see this and you'll hear this a lot of times. Well, I endorsed a little bit, 
And as Rob, who um, is the online assistant and a wonderful leader, um, and will say a lot of times that our arms should hurt from patting ourselves on the back so much because we're constantly endorsing ourselves for what we've done well, right? Because to, to not act on those impulses is highly endorsable. So um, again, that is, that's where you'll hear sabotage, right? That, that um, I didn't endorse, um, I acted on those impulses. Again, not indicting. This is why we come to recovery is to keep working and keep getting better. So uh, Marilyn, I saw your hand up, go ahead. Oh, yeah, thank you. I got, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, thank you. It was just that um, I want to me, one of the um, spots is where we're not in response to the initial flare. The initial flare comes automatically. And it seems to me, you know, with a child that um, it would be average to get angry when they don't listen. But you see, <laughs> as it was presented, it seemed like she did the recovery uh, spotting very quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, right. I, yeah, I wouldn't say that, to me, it doesn't seem like sabotage because she seemed to have worked really quickly. Right. So here, eight, one, two, self-appointed expectations leads to self-induced frustrations and disappointments. So expecting the outer environment to do things that sometimes they don't do and um, continuing to work on this, the leaders are trained. And this is what is so great about, in my opinion, is why I wanted to do this presentation, why the big five is so powerful. It's because sabotage is one of the hardest topics that people have when they're recognizing in the recap, in their own process, in their own mental health, is to recognize where am I responsible? And so when we're consistently doing this after every example, we are learning from the experience and knowledge of others through this process. So even if you don't spot it, the leaders are trained to help to bring out that sabotage, to help bring out the thefts, the tempers, the control, and the movement. And that's what's great. So just because you don't see it, the leaders might be able to comment or to bring it out. And then you can discuss it during mutual aid and have that, that ongoing um, education and, and knowledge. So we would end, the next one we would end is the opportunities for endorsement. So in this example, um, where do we see um, where this example giver can endorse? Um, somebody did put um, in the chat, uh, endorse for the effort, not the outcome. That's a great one. Um, so does anyone else see where the, in this example, again, made up example, that this person can endorse um, for, for their effort? Go ahead, Lisa. Uh, the example gave her chose peace over power of the home and was group minded, Take the, taking the yeah. total view versus the partial view. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, go ahead, Dan. We haven't heard from you. Um, the example giver could endorse for controlling their speech muscles. When we control our speech muscles, yes. we have to regret. Nothing to regret later. Um, she dropped the judgment. There's no right or wrong in the trivialities of everyday life. That's right. And as we know, in, in Peace uh, Versus Power in the Family, right, which is one of the books, I wanted to show this to you. Dr. Lowe talks a lot about that, that children are our greatest sabotage, and the closer the tie, the closer the link is of the person, the greater our symptoms are going to be. And so the greater the spotting needs to be. So um, I did want to remind everyone, and I and I am so sorry. I know this. I realized it right before I started the um, uh, this meeting that I did not change this because I was supposed to go back to the um, Amazon Smile. Um, if you go to our website, or even if you go to Amazon directly, you can type in Dr. Abraham Lowe, and all of these books will come up, uh, and you can order them if you have Prime. Um, you know, it's free shipping. It will deliver to you or anyone um, it, that you uh, would like to send uh, a book to. Um, Amazon Smile, unfortunately, has gone away. Um, and so we have partnered with iGive.com. And there are a number of uh, 
There's about 20,000 stores uh, around the country that uh, partner with, excuse me, not 20,000, 2,000 stores that partner with iGive.com and we get a percentage if you order and you have Recovery International as your cause. Um, if you uh, are able, you can just use your iPhone and uh, scan that QR code. It will send you directly to our secure link uh, to, to donate. You can do an individual donation. You can set up a recurring donation. Um, and if you have any questions, you can call the San Diego office. It is listed there or Chicago office. Um, listed there if you have any questions. Uh, the request is if you do give a donation tonight to please uh, make sure you mention the online meetings 